Hello. In this lecture, we will study the unit circle as a way to discuss sine and cosine functions beyond just right triangles. We'll begin with the distance formula to compute the distance between two points in the plane, and from there we'll derive expressions for the equations of circles. We will use the unit circle, a specific circle of a given radius and center, to define sine and cosine slightly differently, but motivated by our understanding of right triangles. We will then compute sine and cosine using coordinates of points or reference triangles. So let's start by understanding how to compute the distance between points. Let's take a look at the points negative 2, negative 1, and 4, 3. How would we find the distance between them? So we can plot them in the xy plane. Here they are, negative 2, negative 1, and 4, 3. We're going to use these two points to make a triangle. Specifically, the hypotenuse of this triangle is going to be the line segment between the two points. This gives us two ways we can draw a reasonable triangle, either above or below this segment. We're going to draw it below, although it doesn't really matter. So we make a right triangle below this hypotenuse. We can now directly find the lengths of the legs of this triangle. So looking at the x coordinates to find the length of the horizontal leg, the difference between 4 and negative 2 gives us a distance of 6 just horizontally. But 3 to negative 1 as a vertical distance are 4 units apart. So now the distance between these two points can be computed via the Pythagorean theorem. Specifically, d squared is 6 squared plus 4 squared, from which we compute that d is equal to the square root of 52. The method we just used can be used to find the distance between any two points in the xy plane. So this is frequently called the distance formula. The distance between points x1, y1 and x2, y2 is given by the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. This is merely the Pythagorean theorem. So for example, find the distance between the points 4.5 comma negative 2 and negative 11.3 comma 6.1. All we have to do is apply the formula above. So the distance between these two points is the square root of the difference between the x coordinates, so negative 11.3 minus 4.5 squared, plus the difference between the y-coordinates, 6.1 minus negative 2 squared. It doesn't really matter which one goes first or second. The only difference will be whether you have a positive or negative quantity inside those parentheses, but you're squaring it anyway. So plugging this into a calculator, we would simply get the square root of 289.33. Now a circle centered at a given point with radius r, by definition, is all points whose distance to the center is given by the radius r. So you specify a center and a given distance, and a circle is then all points that far away from the center. So if this is the center, a, b, and we specify an r and ask what other points are that distance away, we would get this whole circle. So if x, y happens to be a point on the circle, the distance between the two points x, y on the circle and a, b, the center of the circle, must be r. But then the distance formula just gives us this expression here. The distance from the point x, y to a, b is equal to r. This is typically then squared on both sides to get the easier to look at expression x minus a squared plus y minus b squared equals r squared. That is just the equation of a circle. So if you have a circle with center a, b and radius r, there you have it. The equation of the circle is x minus a squared plus y minus b squared equals r squared. This merely tells you all points x comma y whose distance to a, b is equal to r. So for example, give the equation of the circle with center 7, negative 3 and radius 2 thirds. Well, the center is 7, negative 3 and the radius r is 2 thirds. So plugging it into that formula, we would just get x minus 7 squared plus y minus negative 3 squared equals 2 thirds squared. We can simplify this a little bit. x minus 7 squared plus y plus 3 squared equals 4 ninths. Now remember, the trigonometric functions of an angle theta, sine, cosine, and so forth, we've defined as ratios of sides in a right triangle. 
But for this to make any sense, the angle theta has to be strictly between 0 and 90 degrees. Theta is an angle in a triangle, so it has to be positive. And because there's already a right angle of 90 degrees, and there's a third angle which is missing, the angle theta can't be 90 degrees or larger, otherwise that third angle would be 0 or negative. So this definition of sine, cosine, and so forth only works when you have angles strictly between 0 and 90 degrees or 0 and pi over 2 radians. So can we make sense of something like the sine of 100 degrees or cosine of 3 pi over 4, which are not in this range? Now, if you plug these into a computer or a calculator, it will absolutely give you an answer. So what is it doing? We absolutely can make sense of these. All we have to do is slightly generalize what we mean by sine and cosine. And the more general definition we're going to use is based off points on the unit circle. What's the unit circle? It's a very standardized circle. Of all of the radii we could have picked, we pick one, and all of the centers, we pick the origin. So here is the origin as the center, and we mark off a circle of radius one. So for example, if we move one unit to the right, we know that this circle contains one zero. If we move one unit up, it must contain zero one. One unit left from the center, the circle must contain negative one zero. And similarly, one unit down, the circle must contain 0, negative 1. So this circle has equation x squared plus y squared equals 1. The center is 0, 0. So x minus a squared would be x minus 0 squared, or just x squared. y minus b squared would be y squared. And similarly, r being 1 means r squared is just 1. This is a nice, straightforward equation to work with. x squared plus y squared equals 1 is the equation of the unit circle. Circle of radius 1 centered at the origin. Now when an angle theta is in standard position, it has a corresponding point on the unit circle. So if we had this angle theta, because these rays are assumed to go on forever, there will be some point on the unit circle on the terminal side of that angle. There it is. If this angle pointed in this direction, it would point to that xy, and if the angle went almost all the way around, it would point there. Now, if theta happens to be acute between 0 and 90 degrees, or 0 and pi over 2 radians, in other words, it's in quadrant 1, the upper right quadrant, we can draw a right triangle containing theta, whose hypotenuse would be a radius of the circle, 1. So take a look at this diagram. Here we've drawn the unit circle of radius 1. Theta is in standard position, so its center is at the origin and its initial side is the positive x-axis. We rotate positive theta, we're going counterclockwise. Some amount in the first quadrant, this corresponds to a point on the unit circle xy. We can now make a right triangle by drawing a vertical line down to the axis. This gives us a radius of one, so this right triangle has a hypotenuse of one. And observe that the horizontal measurement of this triangle is exactly the x-coordinate of the point on the other end of the hypotenuse. And similarly, the height y of this triangle is just the y-coordinate of the point that we picked on the unit circle. Now, for this right triangle, we know that cosine of theta is the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse, x over 1. But since the hypotenuse was of length 1, that's just x. And similarly, the sine of theta is y over 1, or just y. So if we are in quadrant 1, and we look at the unit circle, whose radius is 1 and centered at the origin, and we make our angle theta correspond to a point on the circle xy, we have found that the cosine of the angle is the x-coordinate of that point, and the sine of the angle is the y-coordinate of that point. All we do is take this notion and apply it to all angles. So if you have an angle corresponding to a point on the circle, whether it's in the first quadrant or not, by definition, we now say the cosine of the angle is the x-coordinate of that point, and the sine of the angle is the y-coordinate of that point. In other words, whether you're in the first quadrant, as in the first picture, or the second quadrant, which is our second picture, or wherever, if you draw the angle theta in standard position, and then you look what point on the unit circle, x, y, does that angle refer to, the x-coordinate is the cosine of the angle by definition, and the y-coordinate is the sine of the angle. And from here, the other trigonometric functions are defined just like they were before in terms of sine and cosine. So the tangent of the angle is simply the sine of theta over the cos of theta, or the y-coordinate divided by the x-coordinate. 
the cosecant is one over the sine of theta, the secant is one over the cosine of theta, and the cotangent is the cosine over the sine of theta. These are the same definitions we had for right triangles. And since all we had to do was extend sine and cosine to now act on any angle we want, we similarly just let tan, cosecant, secant, and cotangent be defined like they were before. We'll take a look at these functions uh, in more detail later. For now, we're just focusing on the sine and cosine. So for example, the point negative 2 fifths comma root 21 over 5 is on the unit circle, and it corresponds therefore to some angle theta. What are the cosine and sine of theta? Now, if you wished to verify that this point was on the unit circle, you would merely check that x squared plus y squared is indeed equal to 1. It is, but we're not asked to do that. So the point is in the second quadrant. How do I know? Because the x coordinate is negative and the y coordinate is positive, we went left and up. That puts us in the upper left quadrant. That's quadrant two. So this is a reasonable diagram for our problem. So the x coordinate is negative two fifths. The y coordinate is root 21 over five. So we're on the unit circle. So the cosine of the angle is just that x coordinate by definition. So cos theta is negative two fifths and sine theta is root 21 over five. Another example, suppose we have an angle, its sine is 7 eighths, and we know it's in the first quadrant. What must the cosine be? So here's a picture, because we know we're in quadrant one, we're just gonna draw it like this. The sine of theta is 7 eighths. So this angle corresponds to a point x comma y, but the sine of theta is by definition the y coordinate of the point on the unit circle that the angle is corresponding to. So we know the y coordinate of this point must be seven over eight. So the point on the unit circle that this angle looks at is x comma 7 over 8. Now we just need to find x because that will be the cosine of the angle. But remember the unit circle has the equation x squared plus y squared equals 1 and we know that y is equal to 7 eighths. So x squared plus 7 eighths squared equals 1. Now we just need to solve for x. 7 eighths squared is 49 over 64. Subtracted from 1 is 15 over 64. Now this is x squared, so x is plus or minus root 15 over root 64. Root 64 is just 8. But because we're in quadrant 1, or the upper right, x must be positive. So the cosine of theta, the x coordinate, is root 15 over 8. Now there are two right triangles that are very commonly used in examples, specifically because we can find exact values for all the sides and all of the angles. These reference triangles are the 45, 45, 90 triangle and the 30, 60, 90 triangle. They're called these in reference to their angles, 45, 45, 90 and 30, 60, 90. Converted to radians, 45 degrees is pi over four. So we have pi over four, pi over four and a right angle of pi over two. Or the 30, 60, 90 triangle is pi over three, pi over six and pi over two. But the lengths of the sides are all known for these reference triangles. So can we use them to find the cosine and sine of 300 degrees exactly? So here's a point on the unit circle that corresponds to this angle. So here we are in quadrant four, our angle 300 degrees, since it's a positive angle, we went counterclockwise. Now we're gonna make a reference triangle for this angle. All that means is that we draw a line to the X axis and make a right triangle so from this point x, y, if we draw a line to the x-axis, a perpendicular line, there it is. This gives us a 60 degree angle because we're almost all the way around. That angle at the center is what's missing from a full rotation having already done 300 degrees. So that's a 60 degree angle. And because we're in the unit circle, we have a hypotenuse of one. So there's our 60 degree angle, not the right angle, but the one inside, and a hypotenuse of one. So this 60 degree angle is sometimes called the reference angle for 300. Whatever the angle you're looking at is, if you draw a perpendicular line to the X axis and form a right triangle, the angle at the center of the circle in this triangle is called the reference angle. So from our original angle of 300 degrees, we have made this reference triangle down in quadrant four with a reference angle of 60 degrees. Because we have a 60 degree angle and we have made a right triangle, what's missing is 30 degrees, we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. 
here was the diagram we had for a 30 60 90 triangle normalized to have hypotenuse one the width is one half and the height is negative root three over two so the x coordinate is one half and the y coordinate is negative root three over two now observe we made y negative because we are in quadrant four so the standard reference triangle just uses positive lengths depending on what angle is where and what quadrant you're in you'll need to know whether you need to make these positive or negative but in quadrant four x is positive and y is negative therefore the cosine of 300 degrees by definition is the x coordinate of this point one half and the sine of 300 degrees by definition is the y coordinate of this point negative root three over two Continuing in this vein, can we find the cosine and sine of 3 pi over 4? So as with the last example, we're going to draw that angle and make a reference triangle. Now 3 pi over 4 is somewhere in quadrant 2. It's bigger than pi over 2, that would be one quadrant or one quarter of the circle, but it's less than pi, that would be two quadrants. So somewhere in between one and two quadrants of rotation puts us in quadrant 2. So we draw a perpendicular line to the axis and make a reference angle of what's missing. Now to go straight left would be exactly two quadrants of rotation or pi, but we've already done three quarters pi, so what's missing is one quarter pi. So now we have a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Pi over four radians, remember, is 45 degrees. We have a right triangle with a 45 degree angle, that's a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So here's the reference with hypotenuse one, the height would be root two over two, and the width, because we're in quadrant two, we make it negative, is negative root two over two. Therefore, by definition, since we now know the x and y coordinates of that point, root two over two for the y coordinate and minus root two over two for the x coordinate, the cosine is the x coordinate, so cosine of three pi over four is negative root two over two, and sine is the y coordinate, so sine of three pi over four is positive root two over two. More examples, can we find the cosine and sine of negative pi over six? Now, since this angle is negative, it starts from the positive x-axis, but opens clockwise. So we put that angle of minus pi over six right there. It's not that big of an angle. It's right there in that quadrant four. Pi over six happens to be 30 degrees. So this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Looking that up, we might find root three over two, corresponding to a hypotenuse of one and negative one half as a height because we are in quadrant four we're using a negative y value so the x coordinate of this point which is the cosine of the angle is positive root three over two the y coordinate of this point on the unit circle which is by definition the sine of negative pi over six is negative one half now in the last example cosine of minus pi over six was root three over two, which would be the same thing as the cosine of pi over six. The sine of minus pi over six was minus one half, which is actually negative the sine of pi over six. In other words, it looks like we might be able to ignore a negative factor inside the cosine function, but factor it out of a sine function. This is true in general. The cosine of minus theta will always be equal to the cosine of theta, and the sine of minus theta will always be equal to negative sine of theta. And this diagram explains why. A positive angle theta is presumed to open counterclockwise, whereas the negative same angle would simply open clockwise. So the angle theta points to there to x comma y, but minus theta opens in the opposite direction. Observe the x coordinate would be the same. Starting from looking straight right and opening up or opening down, the x coordinate will not change. So the cosine function can't tell the difference between cosine theta and cosine minus theta. However, the y coordinate will be the opposite. So the sine of theta versus the sine of minus theta is exactly off by a negative sign. And from here we see that the cosine of minus theta can always be the cosine of theta, and the sine of minus theta is always negative the sine of theta. Another example of taking cosine of somewhat exotic angles. What's the cosine of 5 pi? So this is bigger than 2 pi. It's more than one complete rotation. So what we need to do is find where on the unit circle corresponds to it. In other words, what's a coterminal angle somewhere within 0 to 2 pi? Now, 2 pi goes around once. 
So therefore, 4 pi goes around the circle twice. And 5 pi has 1 pi left over after this. So after going around twice, there's still 1 pi left over. It goes around two and a half times. The corresponding point is just straight left on the circle. We've already pointed out this is negative 1, 0. This is coterminal to the angle of pi. Therefore, the cosine of 5 pi is the x-coordinate of this point that we're looking at, which is minus 1. Let's assume we have the point 2, negative 3, on the terminal side of an angle theta. What are the cosine and sine of the angle? Your first guess might be to simply say cosine is 2 and sine is minus 3, because those are the x and y coordinates. But this point 2, comma negative 3 is not on the unit circle. So what we do is we're going to plot a reference triangle. 2, negative 3 is down here in quadrant 4, with a width of 2 and a height of negative 3, and a hypotenuse we're going to go ahead and label h. Now the angle theta is just labeled there so we know where we're looking at. Now from the distance formula, the hypotenuse can be computed to be root 13. So we're not on the unit circle, there we would have a hypotenuse of 1. However, we can now look at the right triangle definitions of cos and theta. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and looking at our angle theta, the adjacent side is 2, so 2 over the hypotenuse we just computed of root 13. And sine is opposite over hypotenuse. The fact that the opposite side is labeled as a length of minus 3 simply comes from the fact that we were in quadrant 4, we were given a negative y coordinate, but that's fine, negative 3 over root 13 is our sine of theta. In general, if xy happens to be on the terminal side of angle theta, whether you're in quadrant 1, 2, 3, 4, whatever, cosine of theta will be x over the square root of x squared plus y squared, and sine theta will be y over the square root of x squared plus y squared. Observe that that denominator, root x squared plus y squared, is exactly going to be the length of the hypotenuse you would compute from this diagram. And then you simply say adjacent over hypotenuse or opposite over hypotenuse.